Yeah. Okay, Rachel, we're just going through your uh, program design. So as you can see, we have here foam roller, that never changed, static stretching, where you can put in some whatever you want there, really, tennis ball work, slitter work, even whatever's in your paradigm. Um, and then you have pick your static stretches that you generally guard players or soccer players, whatever, again, population you're working with. Let's say it's forwards and rugby, you're going to have a lot of tight pecs, a lot of tight everything, really. So you do your best. Some form of uh, warm-up, again, depends on what you're going to cover that day. You can see overhead stuff here, deadlift holds and snatch practice because we were trying to teach them in 2010 how to uh, Olympic lift. Speed work, um, because they're warm, they're more receptive to speed or power work, allegedly after this point. Makes sense. Why would you do speed when they're all uh, banjoed after a hard session? So you put that in there to start. Um, then you go into your meat and potatoes. So we have here a textbook triplex. Um, reps, don't worry about too much for now. You could write a whole book on just reps. But generally three sets of eight will get you to a lot of um, dances, you know. It's going to be good. So you have barbell snatch, small bars, plates, whatever. That could be easily, if it's a camogie team, that could be a reverse lunge or that could be just bodyweight squat, you know. Marine push-ups, a push drill. Again, if it's a really low-level team, it could be elevated push. Uh, one, two, three, cut drill is just a movement skill drill. At that particular time, their lateral movements were poor, so I threw that in. When you do any form of Olympic lifts, you generally don't stack it with too much heavy stuff. So you wouldn't put Olympic lift, chin-up, heavy bench. That wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense. It could be done, but you'd want to know what you're doing. One-leg row um, is a one-leg exercise. We're always trying to get them in our programs in FTI. Uh, band shuffle drills is a glute activation drill at that time in 2010 I was pretty obsessed with them um, probably overdid them tightened up the hips a bit too much back then looking back but no harm either that's a glute drill it's lateral it's hitting I'd say a leg exercise squat pose to press is in a deep squat position and they press so it's a press it's a core it's a mobility drill guard players uh, soccer players rugby players have tell terrible mobility bench press everyone generally knows med ball slams is a pull, believe it or not, and one leg squats technique. I was trying to introduce some one leg squats that ended very badly with that group. I seem to remember, I can somehow remember four years ago. Um, I wouldn't have done that again, but that's hindsight, okay? But you can still see push pull legs, okay? Push pull legs, it's a simple enough uh, system. So, again, you, you need to know session flow. So, for example, would you do bench press dumbbells alternate if there was one bench and dumbbells from one to ten? No. You'd probably do something like use that one bench and have four players going off that and doing some elevated push-ups. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. Um, so you need to know your space. Conditioning at the end. Why? Because their heart rate's already elevated, so they're going to get a greater conditioning effect at the end when they've already done all their homework. Um, so that's a basic enough program. Um, dated a little bit. As you can see, there's no um, sort of... Uh, what do I call it? There's no activation stuff in there. A few of the exercises, oh, a few of the exercises on hindsight, I wouldn't do again with a team. Some of it worked really well. And um, obviously, what phase of training they were in, I don't know if I wrote it, which I should have. Phase two, so this was the power phase. Um, before that, we would have done some anatomical adaptation stuff, just basic stuff, get the boys back into it. Um, Again, you need to know your space. So again, we had a bit of spoilt up in that gym in Valley Kickums in one sense because they had a lot of room. So we could do some proper speed stuff. But then again, the boys were big, powerful athletes. Did it get a bit scary towards the end? Yeah, it did. So we moved that out in the AstroTurf. Um, again, that was a pain because I had to go up and down and people were losing interest. So you got to know your space. you got to know your space. you got to know your space. So any questions on that, feel free to give us a shout. But it's fairly self-explanatory.